And he comes over to me and he's like, he walks, he's like, who are you doing? You got a problem? I said, no, I don't got a problem. You got a problem? He goes, yeah, I want to see you outside. And he flicks my arm to like, yo, I'm going to go kick your ass outside. That's what he's thinking. So I was like, okay, I'm game. So I gave, put my stuff down and I roll outside, you know, after him. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Pat Walsh coming at you uh, with an update. I know everybody wants to know about what happened at the New York informational um, session last night. Um, so I figured I'd, I'd do a little recap. Um, I got in there about five minutes late. The meeting was already going on. Um, the auditorium could hold about 300 people. We had about 150 people there. So um, it was no great showing, but they were already midstream doing their thing. I sat down um, and after about five minutes of listening to them go, you know, point by point by point, um, they actually described their contract quite well. There was about five board members. I think David White, Kateris, um, Hodge, um, forget the older guy's name. He's been there forever, um, which he didn't really have much to say, so he should probably go. Um, and then uh, one of the moderators or one of the board guys, I don't even know his name, um, but he was very well spoken and he presented everything in a great light, of course, because that's what they're do. That's what they do. They're selling this contract to us. Um, it was received, um, I'd say, by the 150 people. It was probably 55% supporting the contract. So. Um, about about five minutes into it, I kept noticing that these security guards were looking at me, like, and, and it's like three of them that are just kind of really beaming at me. So yeah, so like, if I look around, I don't know any of these guys, you know. So uh, I, I give the one guy a stare, like, "Yo, dude, like, what's your problem?" So he actually comes up to me and he says, "I'm assigned to you um, to make sure that you know you're going to be respectful and, and and make sure that everything's cool." And I'm like, okay, well, what does that mean, you know? And uh, he said, well, no pictures, no video, no anything like that. So I thought, wow, this is, maybe it's due to the fact that there was something that went down in LA. But the point is that these guys know that there are certain people that are trying to, uh, you know, put the word out and let people know what's going on and for people to be transparent. I mean, videotaping and reporting on certain things are, are good for our community. Um, so I was a little taken back by that. So we basically were asked to um, ask questions. We were gonna have like a minute or um, two to ask questions. We went to the opposing sides of the audience. There were a microphone to the left and a microphone to the right. There was about 10 people on each side that had questions. Um, I was about seventh in line. There was a gentleman that spoke, which I thought was a great point. You know, producers don't have an incentive right now because our union is not, um, you know, pushing for late fees and the late fees aren't enough. Um, and I thought that was a great question because we do have to give the producers incentives to pay on time. Um, there were some other questions. There wasn't a lot of hard hitting questions there were a few um and even from our stunt community so that was good i mean court had got up there and spoke natasha um frank alfano um frank ball i think was had some really hard-hitting questions which is was, was really great i basically applauded the guy for talking about the um the producer um the producers not having incentives to 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 pay us on time um but when I got up, I said, um, and I didn't even know that this was a, a law or anything. I just, or elite, you know, I'm breaking the code or whatever. I just said, hey, my name's Patrick Walsh and I'm running for national board. And they're like, ah, and they jumped up and they stopped. They're like, oh, you can't do that, it's a legal thing. And that was uh, the president, Katerra, so it was like, shut me off right off the bat. Okay, well, I didn't know that. Can I, can I continue? Okay, great, continue. I thank the guy for making the statement. So my, so my first question basically was about this sexual harassment thing. Why is it in this contract? Was there specific incidents that pointed to stunt people having a problem? Why isn't it producers or why isn't it everybody? And if it is everybody, why is it kind of spell it out? Stunt specific people need to go to sexual harassment. 
I find that um, a little crazy. And if there are incidents, I think that we should know who we should stay away from or who we're working with um, rather than like, okay, you guys all have to get into AA, a DUI. Well, I'm not a big drinker. I've never had a DUI before, et cetera. So um, I asked about that. Um, and then I went on to talking about, I believe, um, technology. I thought um, technology um, being on set, I think we could um, use technology to make many things happen quicker. David White did touch on that they are going to try to do, um, you know, uh, our contracts and stuff digitally, which is great. But what about safety issues? You know, so I was specifically saying safety issues and technology. I think if there's a safety issue, everybody has cell phones, you can record it, and there should be like a hotline that then goes to, you know, a per somebody from production should always be there. I know it happens on big shows, but what about small shows? There should always be someone that has, you know, the bat phone that can answer to the safety concerns. Um, and um, technology, like why are, we, why are we not streaming these events? I mean, we have to fly five board members or however many had to come across country, but we're flying them all around the country. We're putting them up in hotels. We're renting this big space when we could have streamed it, you know? And their response to that was basically that, oh, well, the producers are going to see it. We're going to lose our leverage. Well, we've already done this. I would, wouldn't mind having the producers, you know, in the room. So I don't know. I think, I think the cost and the, and, the, and, and the fact that it's difficult for everybody to get to a meeting at one time, it should be taped and could be replayed. And this way, everybody can weigh in. Like, it's important that all of the members understand what's going on. And if the producers get wind of it or if the producers want to tune in, better yet, you know, they, they can understand that we are not all that happy with um, what was negotiated on our side and that we want to stand tall and potentially strike. So that can only help us from what, from, so I don't know what, uh, doesn't make sense from, from, from the standpoint. Also the cost is to, like flying these guys all around and, and, and renting it. Um, renting a, uh, you know, an auditorium, security guards, refreshments, things like that. It's just not worth it, you know. So the response to the technology question was like, hey, um, we have, you know, our SAG representatives that go to set, they're going to all be supplied with iPads. We gave them iPads. Well, who's paying for that? Who's paying for the iPads? And you guys know the quality of the SAG reps. Do you think that they can even work an iPad? Now are they going to get a free lunch? They're going to get a free dinner. They're going to have a nice new iPad, you know, to play video games when they can slip into the, to the, to the side room or, you know, in holding or whatever. It's not going to really help anything. Why don't we empower ourselves, have some self-responsibility, and if there's a safety issue, we're able to record it ourselves and upload it to a hotline or something. We need to cut costs and we need to be more self-serving. Um, the other thing was um, safety in regards to, I had mentioned that, you know, on occasion I'm a stunt coordinator and, um, and I always seem to be pressed by production. Hey, look, you know, um, we can't have that guy falling back. He can't be a stunt person. We can't afford it. We, we could only have four stunt people. You know, I know you're asking for seven or eight, but we can't, you know. So it's a, it's a catch-22 because if you don't appease them, you're going to get fired. And a lot of people will say, oh, well, just don't take the job. Then walk. Well, somebody's taking a job, and I got to eat. And if I'm, not, if I'm not constantly working, you know, because the people that are constantly working don't have that problem. So, yeah, I got to kind of like work with them a little bit, you know. There should be some guidelines because that's it's a safety issue, you know. If you don't have a couple people to spot somebody on a high fall or if you don't have enough people um, to watch out, on, you know, sometimes there's even second units that break off and, 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 and it's all of a sudden, you know, you have two people and one guy's supposed to be a double. It's like, it's always, it's always about cutting costs and maximizing their profits for the producers. They're not really looking at safety. So 
our job is to create this safe set and, you know, doing gags safely. So sure, we might need a utility stunt person. We might need, um, you know, a double where, okay, well, the actor says he can do this fight and he's Johnny, you know, with a rock em, sock em, robots, whatever. But, you know, we might have to have, um, you know, a double and the double is going to cost you, but it's going to, it's going to make sure that things happen safely. And, um, you know, if the actor backs out of it, then, you know, the double can step in. So um, it's something that I see constantly. And, you know, how far are we going to get pushed? Because, um, you know, we're limiting our, our stunt jobs um, in essence. So um, that was a, a big concern of mine. Um, and um, the question that I didn't get off because um, it kind of stopped me. And at that point they said, okay, because some people were peeling off and going back to the line. So um, they cut me off so I couldn't actually do a second run around. So, um, so I didn't, and I didn't actually get to my last question would be, you know, these, these, these people didn't have the, um, the foresight to understand what, um, the new media, um, was, you know, 10 years ago, maybe I'm not sure when it went to DVD, but, um, all the streaming stuff, they didn't understand it until very recently. So are we going to entrust, um, people that don't understand the technology and then, so they didn't understand it then. What makes us think that they're going to understand it now? So we're moving into blockchain and things like that. They need to be hip to that, especially if we're negotiating. We want to understand where things are going. We're not so interested, you know, people on the board shouldn't just be like, okay, it's all about production. It's all about production. We should also know about distribution and the future of distribution. So I think that's very important. I didn't get to ask that question. There were some, some, some great people that stood up for the extras, um, talked about picture car, um, situations. Um, it talked about, um, which is well deserving. I mean, it, it, it just, you know, the more and more I learn, the more and more, um, passionate I become about not only helping out the stunt people, but helping out extras and helping out, um, the journalists and the NPR people and the video game people. Um, it's, we're just getting stepped on and we're not uniting. So the more and more, um, even when you have meetings like this, you're only getting 150 people and, and maybe 300 people in LA. So that's 450 people coast to coast when you can do a live stream that I think is now up to almost 7,000 people that we did the other day. So everybody can be included. And if it was, imagine if we had, you know, a little bit of money or a little bit of time, we, we organized that the night before. So imagine what we could do by organizing, organizing and getting together and everybody having a voice, everybody able to ask questions. Why is there a time limit? Why does everybody have only one minute to speak? Why does, you know, Isai Morales get shut down? He's running for president. Why is Peter Antico's voice not being even louder and, and, and central to some of these discussions? We need to protect our voice and it's apparently not happening even when we pay for, you know, an auditorium and to bring people together. You have security guard, you have like as a member, I can't have a voice. I can't have five minutes to talk. I can't have a conversation without being threatened. Um, so basically what happened was I sat down and a guy got up there after me. He was a, a, a bigger guy. He's a guy that's on the current national board. And he got up there and it was just a stroke fest. I mean, he was like, oh, and Gabrielle, you, you did so good and we must be, it was like a PR video, you know, and I didn't recognize that they did have a sign in the back that they were recording. And they were saying that, you know, by reading the sign or being in this room that you are giving up your right to be recorded and be used for publicity and things like that. So here comes this guy and he starts pandering to this board, like just stroking them like, Oh, and you're in a I was in the room and you were so good. And you know, but he had this big, deep voice. He's like, 
I have to say that Gabrielle, you guys did a great, magnificent, unbelievable, like a oh, stupendous job just doing your your negotiating. And we got so many gains. And, and after like hearing this for like 20 seconds, I stood up. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I can't, I can't say like I'm running for a board, but you're able to do this PR video right in front of us with our tax do with our dollars. I, I don't understand this. And they're like, oh, what well, you then Gabriel? I was like, oh, he's right, he's right, he's right. He's got, you can't do that. And the guy's like, oh, well, I'm just saying how good of a job you're doing. Like, whoa, 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 you know, this is a joke. So I was about ready to leave. And, you know, this is this thought, it was just ridiculous. So I go about halfway out. This gentleman gets done with his speech or um, his questions. And he comes over to me. He's like, he walks, he's like, what are you doing? You got a problem? I said, no, I don't got a problem. You got a problem? He goes, yeah, I want to see you outside. And he flicks my arm to like, yo, I'm going to go kick your ass outside. That's what he's thinking. So I was like, okay, I'm game. So I gave, put my stuff down and I roll outside, you know, after him. Okay, what's going on? We get outside. I think um, Kevin Connor, who's running for New York president, he was either out there or he came out after me. And the guy and, and like four security guards come out there. And he like bellies up. I go, what's up, man? You're not half the man that I am. You don't want to make this mistake. And if you want, go for it. So he quickly like deflated. I saw the like, like almost tears in his eyes before anything even happened. And um, he starts to yell and scream and whatever. And I'm just standing there like, is this guy serious? Didn't even know that he was on the national board at that moment. You know, and then... I said, okay, can I talk? And then he went a little bit more crazy. And I, and I said, hey, dude, I'm just, I'm just trying to respond to what you're saying. And he starts going a little bit crazy. One of the security guards actually came up to him and said, said, hey, look, this guy's being very reasonable. You're the one that's getting out of hand, which I thought was really great, you know? And then he goes, okay, oh, well, I just wanna talk. So I gave him five minutes to talk. And then I spoke to him and I asked him some questions. And I spoke for about four or five minutes. Um, you know, and, and things that he was saying is like, hey, I know how the internal board works. I know what it's like. You don't have an idea because you're on the outside. You guys are outside. Everybody thinks that they know, but we're on the inside and we understand how these contracts work and we understand how to get things done and we understand and we, under and it's just, so I let him go on and go on. And then I said, well, look, I want to get an understanding of how much you really know. You might know what the inside walls are painted, what color they're painted, and what artwork is hanging in there, but what do you actually know? So I started asking him questions about, you know, new media. You know, what's the future? Have you ever written your own contract? Have you ever had your own business? How long have you been in the business? And little by little, I began to chop him down to the point where he had to admit that he wasn't all that sophisticated. He might know some of the contract stuff, but does he know about ethics? Does he know about being a good person and standing for stuff and standing for the good of all people, you know? And I think that's and I think that's the key. And I don't think that we're being represented by people that care about the community. It's more self interest related. I'm more in, I'm more, you know, aligned with with the extras and I and I and I, and I and I and I like they're on set we're on set you know great we're all on set together we should all be uniting you ask an extra person okay good do you want to jump off a bridge do you want to jump out of a plane they don't they understand that the that there should be some kind of compensation for that you know there's no argument there's no arguments there it should all be on the table it should be all on the table. What happens when it's all on the table and everybody knows about it? They can't get through their little holes. They got their back doors. They got their little like, you know, fog, you know, they're in the cover of night and they're sneaking around. Well, if it's daytime, baby, and everybody gets to see your game, you really aren't going to have much game because we're going to see it. So um, when I came back in, um, actually the guy and the guy and I, um, we shook hands, we agreed. Um, hey, look, you know, he said, wow, you know a lot about technology. You know, um, I'd love to learn about that. And some of the other board members would love that. And you're the, 
the, the, the kind of person that should be on the board, which I thought was a great compliment. And it just shows that through conversation, through arguments or whatever, it's all about the result. We ended up walking into the room together, side by side. He shook my hand at the end of the thing. He goes, seriously, I hope you have success and I'm going to back you. So one of the other highlights from the um, meeting was, um, I don't know, I believe it was uh, the, the chick from Home um, Improvement, Patricia Richardson, I think her name was. She, um, you know, she had a lot of really great things to say. Um, basically did a mic drop on the whole deal. Um, but she was in support of um, some of the safety issues. And um, she, she obviously is not, pleased with um, this contract so um, and she wants more for the members so that was really awesome so that's the um, that's my recap I hope you enjoyed it I'll talk to you soon be strong stand for something have a blessed day